We're going to speak for yourself. Sponsored by the Popeye's mm. Chicken Sandwich. Marcellus Wiley here with my man, Emmanuel Ocho. Yes, and sir. That suit right there. Something like the Pink Panther, my brother. Is Mount Rushmore of suit wearing. It's too kind. Oh, my God. See what I got to deal with. Going up on a Tuesday. <laughs> Love this dude right here. Let's get it started today with Patrick Mahomes. Woo. Yesterday signed a 10-year contract extension with the Chiefs worth $450 million in new money making it not just the richest contract in NFL history, but the richest in American professional sports. No doubt, the numbers are eye-opening. $450 million over 10 years includes over $140 million in injury guarantees, $63 million guaranteed at signing, and there are also $2.5 million per year in incentives. With a quarterback scheduled to earn $183.4 million over the next six years, Acho. Do you think this was a smart deal for Mahomes? I'm going to say something now. Mm, yes, sir. Because I'm not going to say it in 10 minutes when LeVar is joining us. Oh, okay. LeVar was right yesterday, Marcellus. Ooh. And he convinced me to now answer the question and say, it wasn't a smart deal for Mahomes. Mm. I, I went back and I thought about our dialogue on, on yesterday's phenomenal show, and I thought to myself, <laughs> so. man, Mahomes... He's going to bring in, if we want to look at it, roughly 45 mil per year, right? He's going to break the bank, the largest contract in quotes in sports history. But you got to think, if you're Patrick Mahomes, you were already going to make 27 mil over the next two years. Mm. Now you're making 33 mil over the next two years. Mm. If we want to look at like the next six years when Patrick Mahomes likely is going to have to renegotiate his contract as it stands anyway, really he's going to end up making roughly 40 or so mil a year. Okay. If we being real, bro, he would have made more oh, anyway. Don't do the math and for so, him. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even going to break it down for y'all, but like, yeah. if you really start calculating and carrying the two and mm -hmm. dividing by, if you really get into the numbers, he was probably going to end up making more. So was this a great deal for Mahomes? Mm -hmm. If you look at the big picture in the historical context, sure, you can say it was, but if you really get into the nitty-gritty of the math, right. I think the Chiefs probably won this one. Probably. Let's take that word out and just make this <laughs> with conviction. Look, it wasn't a smart deal. Now, I feel really dumb saying that someone who just signed for a half Correct. a billion dollars <laughs> Didn't do the smart thing, but I have to just go with my experience, and I have to dive into the details like you did. One league source observed this deal and said, he made this deal as if he had no leverage. Mm -hmm. Like, Patrick Mahomes just signed a deal, and his signing bonus was $10 million. There was a rising but still lowly defensive end 20 years ago who had a signing bonus of $9 million, and he's wearing his cheap suit right now. <laughs> How in the hell does the best quarterback maybe ever, at least on that trajectory, and certainly right now, is in a position where only one more million dollars, you walked out of that office 20 years later than myself? That's just my starting point. But let's get into why this isn't a smart deal a little mm -hmm. more. When you sign long-term deals as they used to in yesteryear, you know, Dante Culpepper and mm -hmm. those guys used to sign those 10-year deals. And then all of a sudden, the agents woke up and said, wait a minute. The security that we're trying to get out of this long-term deal and runway is actually not being put into these deals. Present value and future value is not properly negotiating in long-term deals. So you do it for security. If I'm going to get locked up for 10 to 12 years, like Patrick Mahomes, I need security. You know what this deal doesn't give him? What's it do? It doesn't give him the security he needs. Mm -hmm. The financial security is not there, as you just pointed out. If you would have just bet on yourself every time the negotiating table was presented, you would have made more. So financially, this is not a secure place. And in job security, all of the opt-outs are on the team side, not the player side. So I don't know why he signed this. To take it a step further, me speaking yesterday, I was speaking a little ignorantly because I was like, take the money right now. Oh, they you got need you. it, Pat. Money. But yeah. I played linebacker. Mm. Linebacker, there is for sure a 100% injury ratio because on every snap, you busting heads. Yeah. Like, you running into somebody, a grown man, 300 pounds on every plate. But as a quarterback, mm. realistically speaking, you don't often see career ending injuries. There you Alex go. Smith, there you go. he's the most recent one we've seen, but he had more or less a career-ending surgery, right. not really a career-ending injury. Other Remember, there was a staff yeah. infection mm -hmm. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So outside of that, 
You had Peyton Manning. He had a neck, but still came back and won a Super Bowl after that. Yeah. So Patrick Mahomes, if he's just looking at the odds, Marcellus, he more than likely isn't going to have a career-ending injury. Furthermore, he's a mobile quarterback, but he's not a running quarterback, so it's not like he's about to pop an Achilles by the grace of God. So when you look at Pat, if, if he wasn't going to get hurt, you got to bet on yourself. You got to take the one year 45, one year 45, four it. years mm. 170. Mm. But, but then I'm reminded of contracts that break the barrier because they always catch our eyes. We see them on Sports Center, like, oh my God. You see them on Twitter, you're like, oh my God. You see the reporting. Mm. But then in three or four years, things change. Remember Julio Jones, 2015, if I'm not mistaken, signs a huge $71 big. million dollar that was deal. Big. It was huge. Second richest, richest contract at the time for receiver. But then just three years later, he was like the seventh highest paid receiver. Just three years later, had to re-up again in 2019 because there was a little bit of a contract dispute. I think the same thing going to happen to Mahomes because <clears throat> Lamar Jackson going to get broke off. Mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson going to get broke off. Mm -hmm. Don't mess around and let Jerry Jones start to feel a little too comfortable and break Dak Prescott off. Mahomes could look up in three or four years and end up being the fourth or so highest paid QB. I'm going to stay in that same lane, that same vein, because it, it, on, on paper it says half a billy. But if you keep reading, it says not really. One is it's 477 million, not even 503 million in terms of real actual dollars. Those incentives, stop playing. Stop playing. Like, you gotta win. You gotta win. The, you gotta win the AFC Championship game every year. Has to win the MVP every year. Stop playing. He's not gonna get that. So here's the thing about it. You said headlines. Mm -hmm. And headline grabs. And on this show, we're fearless. On this show, we keep it 100. Sometimes 1,000, and that really hurts <laughs> when we shake the table. I got to do that right now. Please. Okay. There are a lot of people out there speculating that this was a headline grab. This was a Lee Steinberg, my former agent, Patrick Mahomes' current agent, a chance for him to lock himself into a long-term deal, make sure he gets that 3% forever, 1% if Patrick is smart, and, <laughs> and continues to ride that wave versus... Well, we saw what happened with Dak Prescott switching agencies, going with CAA, or athletes first, and our boy David. We ain't going to say his last name. We love him. Um, <laughs> the point is, that hit me, and that hit me hard right here. I was a San Diego Charger, and in my third year, I switched agents. I go from Brad Blank, amazing guy, amazing agent, to Lee Steinberg. Okay. And all of a sudden, after my exit interviews in my third year, my numbers were down, I get it, but they were like, look, we got rid of Rodney Harrison, Junior Seau, John Perella. You're the whole defense, they're triple teaming you. You're fine, Marcellus. That's how I left the building. And Lee Steinberg becomes my agent. Brad Blank calls me continuously, and he's my friend, so I'm picking up the phone, but then he's not my agent. I'm like, stop telling me that I need to talk to the Chargers. Mm -hmm. The Chargers wanted me to just take a little haircut, like yours, just a little That's haircut, something. just a little That's something. something. And I didn't. No, it was like I, I was really caught in the tug of war of the agents. And Lee was saying, everything's fine. Everything's good. They're looking forward to seeing you next year. You know what happened? Watching Sports Center 9 a.m. on a Saturday after a great Friday night. Uh oh. I see my name across the ticker. I was like, I ain't get a DUI. I'm in the bed. <laughs> I said, uh uh, uh uh, I only got one child. Don't do that to me. <laughs> It was Marcellus Wiley released. <laughs> Had no idea was coming. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, I'm on the Dallas Cowboys. I get another good deal, and I'm happy. But it's stuck here. And people were telling me there was motivation in the room to get you on to the next deal so Lee could get paid. Now, when I put that parallel to this situation, I'm like, how much of this was Lee explicitly explaining to Patrick Mahomes, like he didn't to me, that this is the best deal for you? Or was this a little incentivized for Lee as well as Patrick Mahomes? Did he negotiate against his own client as well as the team? I'm starting to buy into that uh -oh. because I have history. See, Marcel's going to shake the position. table now. I'm just letting y'all know what I went through. <laughs> I, I understand that. And when you look at a contract like this, you have, to, you have to understand, like you said, what is it? The, 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 the beauty, whatever it is, is in the details. Oh, yeah, the devil's in the details. The, de the devil's in the details. <laughs> right, right, right. right. And, and, and I look at this contract, and I look at this deal, and I'm like, you know what? Something is funny here. I think Patrick Mahomes is still going to get his. Because keep in mind, you win Super Bowls. Yeah. You win MVPs. You still going to get yours. Mm. But in this contract, right. I don't think he's going to get everything he can. Well, after that six year, the $59 million salary, that usually lets the team and the player know uh, we need to restructure at that time. That's on the table. I'm not done here. I just got to breathe on this subject uh -oh. right here. 
I remember get comfortable. I, I was in Buffalo my third year. I I was on the defensive line and I was going up. But there was somebody already up mm -hmm. that was drafted the same, excuse me, undrafted my same year, Pat Williams. I don't know if you know about him. He was a beast, played 14 years in the league, a beast. But Pat was undrafted. Third year, he's restricted. I tell Pat, who was one of my best friends on the team and my roommate, who will blow it up every night before the game. I was like, Pat, chill. You know what you need to do? Take a one-year deal, bet on yourself, and then be an unrestricted free agent. Mm -hmm. Pat didn't have money. His first deal, three years, 600000 My first deal was for $2.1 million. He's like, wow, style. I got to catch up to you, big dog. I said, don't do it. In a year, you're going to be upset how much money you're going to leave on the table. He takes the deal. Five years, $12 million. Pat was better than me. Mm -hmm. Pat was better than me. Five years, $12 million. You know what I signed the next year? Right. Six years, forty. million. And I said, Pat, what did you do? And Pat was stuck. And that's the situation I feel with Patrick Mahomes. Pat got paid. Patrick Mahomes just got paid. Mm -hmm. Well, how much did you leave on this table? That's my issue with mm. this deal. Elsewhere in the NFL, Dak Prescott was probably paying very close attention when news of Mahomes' contract broke yesterday. As he and the Cowboys continue their battle over a long-term deal, they have until July 15th to come to terms or Dak will play on the franchise tag, and they'll do the whole dance over again next offseason. So, Acho, you think Mahomes' deal should have an impact on Dak? Y'all stop playing, man. Y'all stop playing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Oh, God. What, what, what Mahomes and Dak got to do with each other? I think about oh, this, I Marcellus. Some. I got something. I'm a, I'm a college football analyst, my brother, and so I study the game of college football. You used to be. You, you now right. you a host. You're right. Speak for you yourself. right. Say it with your chest. <laughs> right. So, look. Man, I'm, I'm thinking about programs like Clemson, one of several national mm. championships the last decade. They got barber shops in their facilities. They got slides in their facilities. <laughs> you can't be at a lower tier program that hasn't won lately. Mm. Call it a, I don't know, a, a UCLA. Okay. You can't be there and be like, man, we should have slides too. We should have barbershops, too. Why can't you be like that? Because right. you ain't winning them kind of games. You ain't doing it like that. You ain't doing what they doing. Okay. Dak Prescott, yeah. I understand you are winning games. But you're not winning the game. Oh. I understand that you were top five in passing Ooh. this past year when it comes to yardage. But is that correlating to team success? So Dak Prescott, what he get, what his contract looked like, mm. it really shouldn't have nothing mm. to do mm. with Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes' success should have no bearing, sir. Mm. On, 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 mm. on what, mm. Pat, uh, mm. on, on what, Dak? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want you to fall through this one. Uh, I, I'm, I'm already falling through, sir. <laughs> I'm already falling through. You know when I grab this pen while you're talking and I write something down here, it's not going to be good for you, brother. <laughs> First of all, uh -oh. <clears throat> you, you asked the question, what does Dak Prescott and Patrick Mahomes what? have to do with each other? Yeah. Nothing. And it's unfortunate that Patrick Mahomes is the loser in that conversation. The next three years, you know how much Patrick Mahomes is going to make? I'll call it, let's say, 60 mil. <laughs> yeah, 63 million. Good okay. job. You know who else is going to make that? Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to make the same as Teddy Bridgewater, but then Patrick's going to be like, I have nine more years. Yay. And Teddy's going to be like, um, I don't. It's my turn to go back out there in that free market and get more money if he performs. Mm -hmm. How much did I say Patrick Mahomes going to make in the next three years? So 63 if I'm not 63? mistaken. 63? Yeah, 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 I think so. How much is Dak Prescott going to make in the next three years if Jerry Jones keep playing? $123 million. Keep franchising me if you want to. And that's my floor, not my ceiling. They don't have anything to do with each other. And that's a sad reality. I love me some Lamar Jackson. Mm -hmm. If you made me have to pick between Patrick Mahomes and drafting Lamar Jackson, I'm going to take all the time on the clock because I love both of the guys equally. But I will go with the masses. Patrick Mahomes the best quarterback in the NFL today. What the hell is he doing in a conversation tied with Teddy Bridgewater and half of Dak Prescott? Can you please answer that? Yeah, nice I'm going to answer this for you. Nice I'm going to answer this for you. Please. <clears throat> because you clearly are an optimist. That's what you have done. Yeah. You have painted an optimistic picture for the fan at home. Got and you. if they weren't paying attention, they would just have gone with your thinking. Because, yes, if Dak gets tagged this year as 30-plus, 
And if he gets tagged again next year, I think it's what, 35, 30, 37, 37. 31, and then 37. I don't think they can tag him again. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, I, yeah after that, that, I just know we're going to get 50, broke off. 54. Yeah, so that's not going to happen. They're not going to tag him. They're just going to pay him if that happens. You. But mm -hmm. there's a big if, sir. Mm -hmm. that's, okay. that's what you fail to understand okay. is that capital I and that capital F. There's okay. an if. Dak Prescott, the reason the Cowboys ain't paid him long term anyway is because they're almost <clears throat> waiting for him to fail, obviously. Because otherwise, you just pay the man. It's kind of like when they're, they're waiting for Dak to give them a reason not to pay him. So you would be mistaken mm. if you want to simply assume that Dak Prescott's going to ball and get paid, then ball and get tagged again, then ball and get a long-term deal. Because if Jerry wanted to give Dak a long-term deal, he would have done it, Marcellus. Yeah, but you're talking a different conversation, and I respect it. But what I'm saying is, What's the universal language, love language of sports, of business? Mm -hmm. Pay me. How is that going to get paid more than Patrick Mahomes? How is that even a... a it shouldn't a, be a conversation. It shouldn't even be shouldn't feasible. Be but it's not only feasible, it's going to happen. It's a reality. That's my problem. Jeezy, young Jeezy talked about this. That ain't this, and this ain't that. <laughs> Look at... And I can't say the rest because it's rap. <laughs> but the point of it is, Dak ain't Patrick Mahomes. And Patrick Mahomes not Dak. But that's going to be like, when I go to the bank, they love me more than even you, Patrick Mahomes. So being a guy who walked into a locker room and saw Bruce Smith, the greatest defensive end of all time, and I made more money than him. Being in the locker room where I was with Junior Seau, and I made more money than him. Sometimes, and a lot of people get lost in this, you ain't got to be the best player. Right. You just got to be in the best situation. You got to be there at the right time and have the right agent. I don't know what's going on with Patrick Mahomes, but if I had that type of game, I'd need a lot more money. Coming up, Patrick Mahomes says he wants to build a dynasty in Kansas City, but will his new deal get in the way? Find out next. Speak for yourself. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Let's move to the return of this week's, this week's big NFL news. Patrick Mahomes, 10-year mega deal with the Chiefs. The deal comes fresh off Mahomes leading Kansas City to his first Super Bowl in 50 years. And Mahomes just posted on Instagram that he's chasing a dynasty. But with all that money locked up in the quarterback for the next decade, might be hard to keep the rest of the team together. Joined now by NFL analyst LeVar Arrington, but Marcellus, I'm going to start with you. Do you think Mahomes' new deal hurts the Chiefs' chances at a dynasty? No, I don't. Uh, look, when it was reported that <laughs> Patrick Mahomes signed for $503 million. I just assumed with the guarantees and I assumed with the average salary per year that he was just going to take everything from the organization and leave nothing left in the cupboard. But then when you dive into the details of this, you start to realize how team-friendly the deal really is. Respect to Patrick Mahomes, who may be comfortable in this situation, obviously. Loves the city, loves the community, and loves his team and wants to build around him. At the same time, uh, I don't understand why players feel employed to become not only a tremendous player, the youngest Super Bowl MVP ever, and an NFL MVP, but also want to have a side job called being the capologist. <laughs> <laughs> like, think about it. There's a universal hard cap in the NFL. And my job is to make sure that my value in production gets to a place where I actually make the capologist have to work. But... It's a narrative out there where the players need to take the haircuts just because, you know what, we need to build around you. That is not my job. My job is to hit the out route. Your job is to make the numbers work. But Patrick Mahomes decided to do what I think a lot of people were saying Tom Brady did. But don't forget, Tom Brady got his money first. And then he, Mr. Magoo, his way, kind of like unintended con <laughs> consequences <laughs> and became like this guy who would give a little money for Wes Walker and not get <laughs> Wes Walker. And then be like, yo, what's going on? Where's my money? And finally, Tom Brady said, where's my money? And they said, there's the door. And that's the situation at play. I just don't understand the haircut mentality that seems to be at play. So all of that said, they have enough room to spare in terms of the cap because Patrick Mahomes actually let him off the hook. I appreciate young Macho Acho giving Big Bro a little shout out in the first segment. Little I, little I, little thank little you very much, like sir. You know, humility to admit when someone else is right and you could have been a little <laughs> off is, is a beautiful thing. That's first and foremost. Get to the point. I know. All right. Get to all the right. point. Now, we get it. Here's the point. Marcellus is incorrect on this one. Oh. It certainly is not doable. It, it raises the stakes in a lot of ways to not be able to have a dynasty 
based off of this contract. And I'm going to tell you why, all right? When you look at this contract being as big as it is, I know it is it is <laughs> friendly to the to the organization. I understand that. But it's still a very, very, very big contract, right? So you need your elites to be able to build a dynasty and to win. So here's what happened. You got, you got protection deals, right? Yeah. Eric Fisher, Mitchell Schwartz. How does Patrick Mahomes play up to the potential and level he's supposed to play if we don't protect him? You're going to have to pay me. And you're going to have to pay me maximum dollar because you're paying him maximum dollar. You know when they're up? Next season, mm -hmm. right? Okay, then you talk about mm -hmm. production. Travis Kelsey, Tariq Hill. All right, Tyreek Hill up in 22. Kelsey up next year, mm -hmm. right? Huh, how are you going to produce and be that guy if you don't pay me the type of money that you need to pay me to stay here so that Pat Mahomes can still look good? It kind of reminds me of the movie New Jack City, right? I was thinking <laughs> about this. I was like, man. G Money was out there. He was going hard in the paint. Yeah, yeah. While Nino Brown was getting all the girls, getting all the cash, had the nice spot. Well, what happened? G Money got jealous mm, mm. and started looking for new deals. Talk about started it. Started looking elsewhere to get his money and to get his chips up, and he wanted to be the boss. It creates a situation where those elites are going to want to be valued and compensated in a way that they feel is adequate enough to stay with that situation, it makes it difficult. <laughs> well, let's stay with New Jack City, shall we? Okay, so And um, since you want to come at me, you know I'm going to come back at you. And rock come on, it. come on. Rock Don't them five, baby. You about to go yeah, to sleep yeah, yeah. right now. Here we go. Okay, Remember right. when we were at the Super Bowl, LeVar, you were right there with me. We were at Prime 112. Uh, we ran into a guy by the name of Brett Beach. Remember him? Uh-huh. Yeah, That's the general yeah. manager of the Kansas City Chiefs. Big fan That's of the correct. show. Gave us love. Gave us depth. What's All up, right. Brett? You know what Brett Veach said about this same deal? Since you want to come at me, won't you come at Brett Veach? He laughing. Bring Quietly. the heat. Uh -huh. um, we're going to continue to do everything we can to surround them with talent. And this deal provides us more flexibility to do that. Basically, they wrote into the contract those deals that you're talking about and said, Patrick Mahomes, the only way we can do that sign your offensive tackles, your weapons, is for you to be on this team for a decade plus. Will you take that deal? Team friendly means the team won. And in this situation, they already accounted for those other players you were speaking of. Uh, they may have accounted for them in the cap. They may have accounted for Marcellus with their wallets. But I don't think they accounted for them with the headspace. Think about this. Come you know, on, everybody Joe, walks into the, Everybody pulls into the parking lot, and it's the parking lot contest. Oh, I if love I it. pull in and Marcellus got a Rolls Royce, I got to have a Bentley. If LeVar Come got on. a Bentley, I got to have a Ferrari. Because I'm Come trying on. to outdo the person next to me, mm. regardless of what's in his pockets. Mm. So when I see Pat Mahomes sign for 503 mil, although obviously he may not get all of that, that's what you're going to read, that's what you're going to see. Mm. When some of these big-time players are up, they're going to want historic deals too. So I understand there may be enough cap space to sign them, Marcellus, but I don't think there's going to be enough cap space to sign them and that ego well that done, comes Nacho. with how much that well, they want. Well done. That's the kicker. Oh, I used to remember that parking lot winning. Well that parking lot yeah. winning. And I never lost, yeah. and that was the dumbest thing I ever competed I in. I, I, took <laughs> I wish I would have lost all of them. Why I buy all them damn cars? <laughs> Here's the thing. What you're saying is absolutely correct. They are not going to keep this team as currently constructed or the same level of arsenal that they had. Mm -hmm. But let's just be real about this. What what happened this Super Bowl this year? We saw the team that spent the most in cap dollars play against the team that spent the least. In the Super Bowl, two different ways to do it. Now, you had a contract with a rookie quarterback who was amazing in Patrick Mahomes. Now, you don't have that luxury. But the quarterback of the other team was just the highest paid in NFL history. But two years ago, you say let's, what? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Because you mm -hmm. uh, you shouldn't have said what you just did. No, talk we got to go to commercial. What you trying to do? No, we say talk 10 about seconds about right there. Right there. Right there. Get, Get him, him off. Outside of, outside of Tom Brady, since 2013, let's think about who won the Super Bowl. You got the Eagles. Carson Wentz was on his rookie deal. Nick Foles was a backup. You got Mahomes. He just won it. He was on his rookie deal. You have Russell Wilson. He won it, went on his rookie deal. You have Joe Flacco, if we can go all the way back, when he won it before he ever got paid. So history, history shows, Marcellus, history shows, my big brother, that to win the Super Bowl right now, recently, it's either Tom Brady being taking haircuts, mighty fine haircuts, mind you, or it's quarterbacks on a rookie deal. But we got to get back to the point. 
the dynasty point. Mm. And the dynasty is he has to win about two or three more. I just am not convinced that he's going to be able to do all Hey, that. hey, what, what did Public Enemy say? Was that history or his story? That sounds oh. like your story. Because I ain't got time right now, because we got to go to commercial, like I said before, <laughs> to go through all the guys at the top dollar still making their money and winning their rings. Let's not go into it and split it that way. You can still get paid and win a Super Bowl. And I'll have that evidence hey. after the commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, Patrick Mahomes has already won a Super Bowl and an MVP. But will he need to do even more to justify his new deal? We'll get into that next. Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Let's return to Patrick Mahomes, who just signed a record-shattering contract extension worth $450 million over 10 years. Lord! No doubt Mahomes has become one of the NFL's biggest stars and has already won an MVP and led the Chiefs to a Super Bowl. But will big money comes even bigger expectations. LeVar Arrington is back in the house. Acho still here with that clean suit. Acho, does Mahomes need another Super Bowl to validate this deal? Man, I'm going to take it up a notch. Mahomes needs two to three more Super Bowls to validate this deal. Ooh. But he needs it to validate not only this deal, but to validate his words. When you couple breaking the bank with going on IG talking about, I'm about to bring in and we want a dynasty See, that's big words now, and you got to make sure you're not just typing words that your teammates can't cast. Because it's not only about Mahomes, we have to remember that, but you don't pay a guy headlines 500, half a bill. Let's say it like that. You don't pay a guy half a bill to just get one or two Super Bowls out of him collectively. You paying Patrick Mahomes this type of money, you're making Patrick Mahomes comparisons to Michael Jordan if he is going to bring you Michael Jordan type of chips. And I understand that this is a bigger, more collective team sport, but Pat Mahomes, hey, one Super Bowl is not enough for 140 guaranteed and for a $477 million contract pre-incentives. He needs to hoist that thing two to three more times Ooh. if he really is going to be able to look back and say, hey, all that money, it was worth it. Mm. No, I disagree. I, I don't think he has to justify anything. <laughs> and and when, you, when you think about it this way, right? When, in my younger days, I, I, I used to come out to L.A. and I used to hang with Dr. Dre in the studio. I, I called myself starting a little music business, had, had artists, right? There was two different <laughs> artists, two types of artists that I had. Shut up, dude. There's two different type of dudes. Is this for real, after, first right? of all? Let's just get, let's this is, just fact this check is the this. Truth. This is truth? Okay. This is the truth. I'm listening this now. This is the truth. I've been right? listening before. I knew, I knew a few people, you know what I mean? But here's the thing, right? <laughs> there, was that, there was the artist that I would give money to that didn't have to give it back, and there was the artist that I gave money to that had to give it back. Mm -hmm. One was basically a loan or a front, while the other was like, you a bad, bad boy. And, and for me to be able to get you and have you on my roster, I had to give you something that made it worthwhile for you to be with me and not go to one of these big labels. Mm. What's happening here with, with, with Pat Mahomes is he's being paid with something that the ROI has already come. It's already come with the Super Bowl, with the excitement that he generates, with his talent and his skill level. He's being paid for what he has already accomplished, all right? What he does from here on out, if he actually gets those Super Bowls that you're speaking of, Acho, if he's able to have MVP gears as he's moving forward, they're going to rip those contracts up and they're going to redo them to actually compensate him more fairly based upon what his performances have been. But this current contract right now today he doesn't have to justify not one, not one more play based off of where he is right now. Now, LeVar, you know far better than myself that Patrick Mahomes didn't get $140 million guaranteed because he won one Super Bowl. He didn't get a $503 million contract yes, he because he won an NFL MVP. Because there have yes, been NFL MVPs and Super Bowl MVPs that didn't get half a Billion dollars. A billion, so they're not, a billion, they're not paying a billion. him. They're not paying him for what he's done. They're paying him for what they perceive him to be able to continue to do. What what contract was he on, Nacho? His rookie what deal. What contract was he on? So he was on his rookie deal when he did all those things you just shout out. Yep. Just now. Yep. Okay. 
They're paying him for what he did. No, because, they're paying because you got Russell did. Wilson yes. who did what he did on his rookie deal. He ain't see, he ain't see <laughs> this kind of money. Okay, y'all are, are arguing right now, and it's cute, but we have what just bur did? we buried the lead right here. So what's the lead? Go back to it. We finally found out who, who, who signed the Mad Rapper. It's, it's you right there. <laughs> I was wondering who signed the Mad Rapper, and it's you, big dog. Anyway, LeVar Arrington, goodness. How you don't see Come on. what this is? This yep. is obvious. I chose right. Thank you. I mean, they almost basically built in, you better get us some more Super Bowls in this deal in terms of the value, in terms of the expectations. When they write you that check, you know how much they expect. And that check is the biggest in sports history. Guess what? They're going to expect more than just a boy wonder. They're going to expect you to be the man throughout the duration of this contract. If they didn't, why do they have all of the opt-out years, mm -hmm. opt-out mm -hmm. clauses every single Say year it. to guarantee Say the it. money for the next year if they're not going to have to measure not only his individual performance, but the team's performance? You have the floor, LeVar. That is the institution called the National Football League. Mm. They do that to everyone. And I said that on the show yesterday. You want to impress me? Say the whole contract is, is guaranteed. True. Say the whole contract is guaranteed. That is how things are handled within the National Football League, and that's how they are able to generate the type of funds that they're able to generate because they get out from underneath contracts. Hmm. That has been the biggest joke, <laughs> if you ask me, in terms of how players are treated and how they're compensated versus other sports. But again, let's go back to the original question. Does he, val is, does he have to do more to validate his career? Does he need another Super Bowl to validate his career in this contract? No, he does not need. But there, are guys that have, there are guys that have done far less than what Patrick Mahomes has done and, 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 and really have, have gone into the Hall of Fame. So to me, to me, when I look at Patrick crazy. Mahomes, man, y'all making no faces. When you're, I'm not crazy. And y'all, sometimes it takes y'all to have to sit down and really digest. We are what sitting I have down. Said to thing. realize what away from the camera to understand oh. my thoughts are right. Usually, usually, right. Levar, <laughs> usually, Levar, you're a lot more logical and reasonable. Right now, you're just being hard headed. Mm. Think about this, Levar. Mm. Think about this. Okay, let me if, think if, about if it. If he didn't have to do more to validate his contract. Why in God's name would there be incentives of $1.25 million, more money than most rookie contracts, just within his contract? He has an incentive of $1.25 oh, million for winning the AFC Championship. For? Bang, 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 he bang. Got bang. For, he got an incentive for $1.25 million for winning an MVP, quite literally validation, within his contract. Val hold on now. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, don't move the goalpost. <laughs> validation, validation <laughs> and incentive are two different things. Ooh, good point. There's two different things. Okay, we you got can it. validate okay. something, okay. And, and, really? and the incentive, you can do more within your contract based off of the incentive. I'm okay with that. So if you're saying that, okay, he needs to get more Super Bowls to get, to get more money, and that's incentivizing him, that's fine. But that's not the same thing as saying validating his contract. No, oh, I don't see. I don't oh, agree okay. with that. Okay, let's stay with the word validate because the contract okay. becomes invalid if he doesn't live mm. up to mm. what they expect, mm. which was about given it. to him in this check. Talk so about it. So here's the problem. If Patrick Mahomes, who in his first year starting, wins an NFL MVP, mm -hmm. and then in his second year starting, he wins a Super Bowl MVP, mm -hmm. you have now given us a different expectation of, upon what your norm is. His okay. norm is not normal. Mm -hmm. So we're going to always okay. look at you, and we're going to see you hopefully in the heavens. With that said, I got a couple things. And maybe story will help you better, LeVar, because this is how fast this thing turns, how fickle it becomes. Patrick Mahomes, amazing start, and if you don't finish like you started, we got an issue with you. I got two stories for you. Last year, Patrick Mahomes comes out, plays, gets injured. Everyone's like, oh, Patrick Mahomes is hurt? No. And then he comes back, and then at the end of the year, you remember what the conversation was? It was small, but it was starting to brew. Ah, uh, he didn't have the same years before. Is it Patrick Mahomes? Is it the weapons? Or is it the fact that he was in and out the lineup? Whatever. Remember the moment they were down 24 points at home to the Houston Texans. Y'all remember that moment? Boy, everybody in their mama was panicking like, 
Oh, and you know what? The ties were ready to turn against him, but he saved the day. Then the next game, he's down, what, 10? He saves the day. Then he's down 10 again in the fourth quarter Super Bowl. He but saves the day. What are you telling me right now? I am telling you right now. What are you as telling fast me? as they were giving him that Super Bowl MVP and that trophy, this is as quick as mm. if he doesn't live up to those mm. moments, you can invalidate this contract. And I got one more story. It's a heartfelt story. Sorry. There's a, a story I just did in Runner's Journal. It's coming out soon. Okay. Call. Where Check is OB Moore? And if anybody knows track, everyone knows who Usain Bolt is, right? Mm -hmm. There was a guy up to the age of 17 faster than Usain Bolt was at every single level and age group to the age of 17. But because of injuries and some lifestyle choices, he didn't live up to his greatness. Now, he is living a life that story is written about potential, not reality. Trust me, and we're in the media. Five years from now, if Pat Mahomes doesn't get up to this level again, like OB unfortunately couldn't, we are going to write a completely different story that would invalidate not only the contract, but a lot of the resume that we saw in the early parts from Patrick Mahomes. When you talk about validating the contract, it talks about, like Marcella said, will they see the contract through? If Patrick Mahomes doesn't ball out, He's not going to see the 10 years of the deal, so it's going to become invalid, a la other quarterbacks that have signed mega deals, Mike Vick back in the day, mm -hmm. that don't see the duration of that contract. Mm -hmm. So you're not getting paid for the past. You're getting paid for the future because if you don't perform as they expect you to, then that future, it ain't never going to be realized. Bro, uh, listen to y'all. Y'all skipping, like, one to two steps. Get off your face. <laughs> y'all skipping steps, all right? And I'm going to tell you why you're skipping steps. Because when you're talking about, does Mahomes need another Super Bowl to validate the deal, mm -hmm. all right? Y'all talking about getting out of the deal. Y'all skipped a step. The deal is already done, fellas. It's done. The moment they offered him the deal and he signed the deal, the deal was validated. It's stamped. It's approved. That money's going into his bank account. If they decide to get from under the rest of the contract, then we can revisit the con conversation and say, okay, he didn't validate himself as a player to continue on with the rest of the deal. But y'all skipping a step, and that's okay. I expect y'all to skip steps that time. I'm going to start at square one. I'm going to start at go, and I'm going to go all the way around the board and come back to go. That's just what I do, fellas. That's, that's wow. just what I do. Talking about that's this deal, sounds do. like LeVar doesn't know the deal. But we'll get back to that. You There's still stop. some meat on you the board. You see that transition right there, that bro? I've been working on my craft, damn it. Coming up, <laughs> LeBron James is gearing up for another run at a title. But is this year actually his last real shot at a fourth ring? That's nuts. Speak for yourself. Presented by Hyundai. Dillard. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Let's move now to the NBA, where LeBron and the Lakers still have their sights set on a title. And just got some good news with Dwight Howard announcing he will join the team in Orlando. But even so, Yahoo Sports argues that this is the 35-year-old LeBron's last shot at a title mm -hmm. because there's so much uncertainty around the Lakers' future beyond this season. We're joined now by the one and only Slick Rick, Fox NBA analyst. But Marcellus, I'll start with you. Is yeah. this LeBron's best chance? winning another title. Yeah, it's his best chance because it's the next chance presenting itself to him. What are those little psychedelic books always tell you? The present is the gift, so you must stay in the present. He needs to stay in the damn present. Not only just because it's the next opportunity up, as Coach would tell you, but also being 35 years old, trust me, when you're at that age playing sports, no matter how great it looks, no matter how great you are producing, mm -hmm. It is harder because it's more difficult to get to that same place. So why would you want to fast forward to next year and he has to do twice as much work to get to the same place? Think about it in terms of warming up. Every year you get older, you got to get up a little earlier just to warm it up, the old Chevy. And then it takes a little longer to cool it down as well. So while this opportunity is ripe and this team has the best record in the West, you got to go out there when you're the co-favorites and do it this year and strike while it's hot. Honestly, there's no question that this is his last best chance to get a fourth ring. And I believe it's one of the reasons why initially when we had the shutdown that he was okay with not coming back and playing because we would have given him the mythical title with the Western 
with the Lakers leading the Western mm. Conference mm. and the Bucks being unproven as a playoff team, we would have said, ah, you know what? LeBron would have got it this year, so let's go ahead and give it to him. <laughs> now, because we're coming back and playing, he has to prove it. And I'm not even going to get into LeBron. We've tried to stick a fork in him uh, too many times to say mm -hmm. he's old, he's past the curve, it's not going to happen. He's been able to maintain himself in, in terrific shape. I'm going to talk simply about where the Lakers are. First of all, if they don't win one or they get knocked out early, does Anthony Davis have second thoughts about re-upping with the Lakers? I don't have any reason to believe that, but until we get to that point, the fact of the matter is they have to re-up him. Mm. They also have to re-up a number of other guys that signed on the cheap. Jared Dudley, Dwight Howard, and you guys may laugh at those names, but the mm. fact of the matter is those guys have played a part in this, and because of where they are cap-wise, they're not going to be, be able to replace him. The biggest reason why he has to get it done now is the fact that LeBron has been able to get talent on the cheap because guys thought, you know what, I'll take less because I want to go and win a ring. If mm. LeBron doesn't win a ring this year, it will quietly have been five years mm. since he has Ugh. captured one. Don't say that. Guys Smith. aren't going to be coming on the that. cheap anymore because they're looking at it and going, hey, the Clippers look a little bit better. Yeah, or you name, name yeah. a team, the Bucks look a little bit better. I'll not take a, a little less and take my chances there. He will not have that going for him mm. unless he gets it now. Bam. Every year going forward is dwindling for LeBron's chances. And I just look at it simply across the NBA. Giannis, he only getting better, and he got that Nigerian blood. So you know what that talk about. Jason Tatum, he's a dog turned into an all-star this season. His trajectory is through the roof. Luka's probably going to steal him one. Yeah. Zion and the Pelicans are young. Mm. And then I start feeling myself, Marcellus, because, you know, you do a great job as a co-host of tooting my horn, reminding me how much I've accomplished at such a young age. Yeah. Then I look at Kawhi and realize he's only 29 ah. and still in his bag for three to four to five more years. Mm. So when you look around just the NBA and you look around the rising stars in the NBA, LeBron is still that dude. LeBron, I think, is still on the mountaintop. But people are traversing and they are climbing that mountain Ooh. very, very, very quickly. Mm. So if LeBron don't get it this year, which is why yeah. this year is actually the best situation for LeBron. Because there's so much chaos, so much drama going around the NBA. Go ahead and try to steal you one. Because if LeBron don't get it this year, them hyenas, they coming for that king. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm going to co-sign that. Because keep in mind, if he doesn't win it this year, that means somebody else did. Mm. And they become the lion. Mm -hmm. And we're already seeing it with LeBron. Kawhi wasn't afraid to come to L.A. Hell Paul no. George wasn't afraid to come to L.A. Like, Hell guys no. are willing to go up against LeBron now. If he goes another year without a ring, guys are – he's not going to be the dog that everybody's worried about. And that has a huge influence on how things go. Y'all forgetting that this is – Clip City, Chip City. Hey, you want to talk about the Lion? Where is the Lion? Where is Mufasa? Mufasa played for the Clippers. And that guy won't be stopped. And now he has a full arsenal. You're talking about the pride. You're talking about the deepest team in the league that has the guy who's alpha enough to say, not only will I step to you, LeBron, I'll step to you in the same arena, in the same building, and see you every day in the same streets and get the parking spot I want in valet. This is going to be a clash of the Titans, and it won't even happen in the NBA Finals. It's going to happen you before then. I'm so glad to hear that, Marcellus, because yesterday you were scaring me. You were so <laughs> cautious about where the Clippers were. This is more like it. This is more like We're getting closer to the season, so I'm starting to really feel it. I'm getting excited, guys. Marcellus, for old time's sake, I just need one more move Mufasa, just one more move. Mufasa. Mufasa. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Coming up, Patrick Mahomes' contract. It just sent shockwaves through the whole NFL. Our resident Chiefs fan, Uncle Jimmy, he going to weigh in next. Speak for yourself. Presented by Hyundai. Welcome back. Let's talk Patrick Mahomes, who just signed a record-breaking 10-year $450 million extension Sheesh. with the Chiefs that would keep him in Kansas City through 2031. Joined now by Uncle Jimmy. Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Jimmy. I know you're pumped. You think this is a smart deal for Mahomes? Hey, man, check this out. Look at that, look at that. Uh -oh. Patrick Mahomes just became the George Clinton of the NFL. 
Oh, okay. Patrick Mahomes just said, if y'all hear any noise, it's just me and my boys getting it. See, because Chief Nation is like Jefferson Starship, baby. You know, <laughs> we built this city. We built this city for Pat Mahomes. Oh. And see, Acho, I know you got over a million followers, and I be hearing them too. You're an Acho, Acho man. <laughs> we want to be an Acho man. See, because for real, man, all they want to do so, is be part of the land of the free. <laughs> And, and the whole of the G. I don't care who you play for. You know. That gets you hype every yeah. time. Let them jet fly over. Yeah. Time to go get it. See y'all tomorrow, America. I ain't gonna lie, that get me hype.